What's up, Sooner Nation? Welcome to the SI Sooners podcast. Really good show for you tonight. We are previewing previewing the Cotton Bowl, and you know what? To help me do that, making his debut on the SI Sooners podcast, I give you Ryan Chapman. Ryan, uh, we're going to try to make this a regular thing, maybe even a permanent thing. We'll see how it goes, but there's going to be a lot of listeners and viewers out there who don't know much about you, even though you've been writing in this area and uh, you know for a while, and you've had a few bylines already at allsooners.com. So why don't you introduce yourself? Tell, tell us a little about Ryan Chapman. Yeah, first off, John, thanks for having me aboard. It's it's a real privilege. And uh, I'm just thankful that we've kind of bumped paths here and there. I'm working in this market. For the most part, uh, if anyone happened to know me before they saw me with, uh, you know, SI Sooners and All Sooners and everything, it's probably from doing some thunder coverage in this market, things like that, a little bit of OU basketball and stuff like that. But yeah, no, I am a uh, uh, born and raised in Norman. I've been around here my whole life, grew up around all Oklahoma, everything. And uh, I'm just happy that I finally kind of found my way, pointed pointed true and to be able to cover some sports because, you know, sports has been my real passion since a, a young, young age. I was raised with my parents bringing me into OU games uh, basically our whole family time, John was going on road trips instead of, you know, going to the beach or whatever, we'd save up so we could drive to Manhattan and, and go to Kansas state and, and watch those games on the weekend, things like that. So I've been around it my whole life. And I guess it, it took me a little while to come to journalism, come to things like that. But, uh, now when I, when I go back and, and again, you know, I went to Norman North high school. So, you know, been around Norman all my life, but when I go back, a lot of my teachers are like, Ryan, I don't understand why you even took any other jaunts, tried anything else. Like from a very young age, uh, John, you know, I was the weird kid. It, when, when the kids were playing pickup basketball and stuff, because I was two foot nothing in, in uh, elementary school, instead of watching the game, I'd sit over on the corner and, you know, commentate and, and things like that. I have always refereed, always been around the game, always around sports. So a real privilege for you to have me on. I'm excited to hit the ground running. I know it's kind of awkward timing as I'm starting at, the end is what most people would think, it, it, you know, headed yep. into bowl season here. But look, uh, better late than never, and I'm just happy to get rolling. Well, welcome, Ryan. Uh, Ryan's over in Norman. He's going to be my point man on the ground there for hopefully for the f- immediate future. Uh, I'm John Hoover. I'm in Tulsa. Thank you guys again so much for listening to the podcast, the SI Sooners podcast. And thank you for watching always, always, always on my YouTube channel, John Hoover Media. We are a Fan Nation affiliate, part of the Sports Illustrated Network. You can find what Ryan and I and others, Caroline Kemper, write about the Oklahoma Sooners every day. Literally, guys, every day at allsooners.com. We call it SI Sooners, but the web web address is the easiest way to do it, allsooners.com. Okay, Ryan, let's get started here with the most obvious. For the second year in a row, Oklahoma is going to a bowl game facing the number one passing game in all of college football. That's right, Sooners take on the Florida Gators and Kyle Trask, Heisman finalist Kyle Trask uh, on Wednesday, 7 o'clock at the Cotton Bowl. They're back in Jerry World. But last year it was LSU and Joe Burrow, Heisman winner, and his uh, NFL-bound wide receiver core. This year it's Florida and Kyle Trask and his big play targets, although, Ryan, um, one of them, I'll let you talk about this, will be noticeably absent on Wednesday. Yes, no pits, no party, John. Kyle Pitts, the, the best tight end in football, a guy that's probably going to be uh, have his name called one of the first 15 names off the board. And, and I, I believe he's the only tight end, John, to ever be honored as a finalist for the Bolitnikoff Award. He is really the, the key to this Florida Gators offense. I, I know that you've got Kadarius Toney, you've got Trevor Grimes, both of those guys, um, uh, 10 touchdowns and nine touchdowns respectively, things like that. But but Kyle Pitts is the guy that makes this whole thing go, John. He, he's that threat over the middle of the field, and he's a mismatch nightmare. We've seen all, you don't have to leave Norman, John, to see what a, an athletic, explosive tight end can do over the years. From Mark Andrews to Grant Calcaterra to Austin Stogner when he's been on the field, we've seen Lincoln Riley and the Sooners 
exploit teams all season long. You know, Lincoln's entire time in Norman. Kyle Pitts is all of those guys, and, and he's more athletic, John. Think of your Darren Wallers, your George Kittles, your Travis Kelsey, that kind of player, that kind of impact playmaker. Kyle Pitts is that guy, and Trask, unfortunately, will have to go without him. So, so that is one thing, John, that I know – it's very sexy, very easy to say, you know, two years in a row, not only the best passing offense in the SEC, but the best one in the country. You've got two Heisman Trophy contenders as, as Joe Burrow, the guy who eventually won it, and Trask, who will be a finalist there. But because it's not a college football playoff game, that this is something that the Sooners have had to deal with for the first time under Lincoln Riley, you have guys opting out, guys foregoing the bowl game. And Pitts is, I think, by far the biggest name who will not be gracing the field in Arlington, which yeah. if you're the Sooner defense, that's great news. But for all of us watching, like this would have been the real test. And it still is going to be, mind you, but this would have absolutely been that test of Alex Grinch and his defense. There's, you know, we know how much havoc they can wreak back there, but the question is always up front, you know, they're intentionally a little undersized for what your ideal NFL uh, you know, defense looks like, things like that. Well, going up against this Florida offense, this would have been that test to see how far they've come because, John, I know they're extenuating circumstances, missing a ton of players due to injury and suspension last year, but we thought this defense had made a lot of progress, and then they were embarrassed, run off the field in Atlanta, never to return almost, mm -hmm. it feels like. Um, this is really the test because as much as we want to say the Big 12 has been super competitive, the defenses have got a lot better, all of that is true. There is not a single quarterback uh, with the skill set that Trask has outside of perhaps Spencer Rattler, and there's not a threat like like Pitts. We've we've seen these Sooners, you know, struggle to contain guys like Charlie Cole or stuff like that. This would have ratcheted that up to an entire new level. So it is a little disappointing on that front, John, because I, I, for one, want to see Kyle Pitts play in person. He's just that kind of difference maker, and, and he's going to be dominating Sundays for many years to come. He's a uh, he's a first team All American. He is a I'm going to say unanimous All American or at least a consensus All American. Uh, he was got unanimous votes by the Football Writers Association first team. Now we'll take back to last year. You mentioned Delaire and Turner Yell with the broken collarbone. Buki got ejected in the first quarter, and you know, yeah, you're right. Frankly, that Sooner secondary, which looked a lot better during the course of the year last year, they were kind of hanging on by the skin of their teeth all season. Alex Grinch talked last year. Uh, I think it was after the Baylor game about scars that the players had that he inherited. Um, so, yeah, Joe Burrow, literally, literally, guys, the best passing offense in college football history. It was not fair. It was absolutely not fair, especially you take starting safety off the field. It was a mismatch. It was boys against men. It was uh, like varsity against JV. Ryan, even though Kyle Trask led the nation with 43 touchdowns, is going to be in New York City as a Heisman Trophy finalist. This matchup is quite a bit better for the Oklahoma secondary, isn't it? Even with Trey Brown opting out? Yeah, and uh, first off, I think we need to have this quick little earmark. Uh, Trey Brown, first Sooner in the history of the program, uh, or at least the modern history, since we have the bowl opt-outs to opt-out. So mark that down in your history books. You'll win a lot of beer at Trivia Night in the future for that one. But no, this is what the Alex Grinch defense has been building toward, John. They've wanted and wanted over and over over the course of his two years in Norman to play 22 guys, to bring in all of these guys that they can rotate in, feel like they can give snaps to. And this is kind of what you saw last year against LSU with Woody Washington coming in once Buki Riley Hiles, like you said, was ejected for the targeting penalty against Edwards Alaire. Now you have an entire season of Woody Washington playing. You've had the emergence of DJ Graham coming on over the course of the season. That big athletic interception against the Cowboys there in Bedlam will be the, the exclamation point on DJ Graham's season, what we all remember. But this is not only a secondary that is a lot more experienced with a lot more depth, they're guys that are lengthier, John. They're lengthier. They're more athletic. It's not just the shorter, speedier guides um, that, that we came to expect under a Mike Stoops defense, under that Kerry Cook secondary, things like that. So once you have Graham, you have Woody Washington coming in, Jeremiah Cradell even rotating in at that nickelback position, not to mention you have the services of Trey Norwood injured last year all year long. Obviously, 
He's come in and been an impact player at the safety position down the back half of this season. This is a secondary much better equipped to deal with not just uh, SEC size and speed and, and all the stuff we hear about at the wide receiver position, but they are also more well equipped to deal with guys missing on their own right. So Trey Brown, yes, he will be gone. But honestly, John, if some of these guys play like they flash, the DJ Grahams, the Woody Washingtons, the biggest place the Sooners might miss Trey Brown could just be in the kickoff return game. Like, it's it's crazy to think that, you know, for years and years and years, Sooner fans have just wished they had this kind of depth. Now, you think that they have it, but this will be that test because for as good as Brock Purdy was, I'm not sure that he can test this defense, test those young guys like Trask will be able to. Trask is, um, you know, the most efficient passer in the country, and he's leading the most explosive passing offense. You can't get to those numbers on the back of one guy alone. So even though Pitts will be gone, you've still got Grimes, you've still got Tony. Tony, you know, when Sooner fans start to see him, the way that he gets lined up in the backfield, they use him in motion, they they use him as a wide receiver out of the backfield, may have flashbacks to 2008, Percy Harvin-esque. He's drawn those comparisons in Gainesville during his time there. So this is by no means a one-man show, but the same can be said about that Sooner secondary dealing with the loss of Trey Brown as he opts out and moves on to the NFL. I asked the uh, the other Trey, Trey Norwood, about him this week, about Trey Brown. Uh, some very interesting answers, you know, being the two Trays. They kind of broke in together literally in the same game. Uh, I'll have that story tomorrow at SI Sooners, allsooners.com. To me, the main thing here is that Kyle Pitts, literally the best tight end in the country, has opted out. 12 touchdowns, 17 yards a catch. Um, that's bigger for the OU defense than Trey Brown is, opting out is for the Florida offense. Trask threw 43 touchdowns. I think I said that earlier. Led the nation by 11 touchdown passes, 375 yards a game, leads the nation. He's number five, I think, in passer efficiency. He's the real deal. He's worthy of Heisman consideration. And if you know what, he's got some better Heisman numbers than I'm going to break out the big names for you. Sam Bradford, Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray, some Heisman numbers, not all, but some of his Heisman numbers are better than those guys and a bunch of other winners as well. Um, Ryan, I got to say this. I think the secondary is, generally speaking, going to have it rough, which means for my money, it's up to the Oklahoma defensive line to keep doing what they've do what they've been doing all season. They're in the top five, top ten, I think, in tackles for loss, quarterback sacks. They've been really good, really disruptive uh, all year long. I'll just say it, but especially since Ronnie Perkins got back. Um, and you mentioned Kadarius Tony, all SEC at three positions. How the hell do you do that? Um, so that kid's good. What do you think, Ryan? Uh, you think the uh, the Sooner front four holds up and makes plays like they have been uh, against Florida, or does Florida have some kind of, I don't know, magic bullet with that offensive line in the quick throw game? Look, I think this defensive line is going to have success. They're just that good. That's what we've come to expect out of this defensive line. The thing is that you're going to have to expect that this Florida offense is equally as good. So I think that'll be a back-and-forth battle all night long here's the real killer for the Florida Gators we know that this Oklahoma defense excels against the run all of that stuff but this Florida offense they rank sub 100 John they are one of the worst 20 rushing offenses in the country as far as yards per game go Trask is going to truly have no help Nothing like that. This Sooner defense is going to be able to pin their ears back and try to get after him. Now, they are more apt, Florida is, at that quick throw game. Like you said, all you have to do is think back earlier this season. I know it's a different time, a different place for most Oklahoma fans, but you think back to that Kansas State game, even without Ronnie Perkins, this Oklahoma defensive line was having a lot of success, but Kleiman and crew made those adjustments to where they got the ball out so early into space that it didn't really matter. You were asking the defense over and over and over again to, to make those tackles in the open field. And John, I don't think that, you know, I, I'm breaking any news here, but these athletes all across the field at Florida are a different animal than that of Kansas State. So yes, the Oklahoma defense has kind of shored up some of that open field tackling, stuff like that. But if anyone's expecting, I think, um, this Oklahoma defense to just absolutely lock down the Gators, I, like I think they have another thing coming. Um, you just yeah. have to remember what it's like when Oklahoma was led by Baker Mayfield and Kyler Murray and those guys. Like, success wasn't always measured 
by how many sacks, things like that. It was, you know, those guys were going to get yards. They were going to get chunk plays between the 20s. It's can you bow up? Can you force field goals? Can you force them to get behind schedule as they're approaching the red zone? Things like that. So I, I think Sooner fans kind of need to to brace for the fact that this game's not going to look like most of the Big 12 battles they've had this season. But that's okay. When you're playing one of these elite offenses, the, the way that you can just spread people out, the way the game's almost officiated, John, like it, it's it's a totally different game than, uh, you know, what it was 20 years ago. So even though you may be thinking, oh, Oklahoma has that dominant defense back, it will never get back to what it was 20 years ago. So just remember what made you nervous when you had Baker Mayfield when they didn't score every time, those th sort of things. That's exactly what that Florida sideline's feeling. They have that kind of anxiety because that is a defense that is pretty maligned and uh, so much so that, uh, I, I mean, People were basically openly asking Grantham if he felt the pressure of, of you know, uh, if he was feeling the hot seat leading up to this bowl game. So, like, it's pretty explicit. We know this Florida defense is not up to par of what they want it to be in Gainesville. So that's that kind of pressure that the Florida offense is going to put on themselves. It's going to come back to what Alex Grinch preaches. Turnovers equal victory. You know, if you've heard it ten times, we've heard it a thousand times. If Oklahoma can force some turnovers, it's not going to matter if Florida puts 450 yards up on the board, John, because if, if OU comes out with two interceptions, maybe forces a fumble, you're going to have to really love their chances, and people are going to come out of this game going, wow, that was a great defensive performance by the Sooners because Florida moves up and down on everyone. I mean, look what they did to Alabama. Like, and No one yelled at Alabama for that. They just talked about how great that you know football game that was. So weird how that all changes, huh? Up next on the SI Sooners podcast, how is Oklahoma's offense going to do against the Florida defense? Trade pros, heat and air in Oklahoma City. Whether you just need service or a mini split for your home office, studio, or man cave, or if you're finally ready to upgrade to a more efficient train system for your entire home, get a free estimate from Trade Pros for all your heating and air needs. Trade Pros earned a Best of 2020 award from Home Advisor and has nothing but five star reviews on Google. Go to TradeProsOKC.com or call 405-675-0176 or just book your appointment on Facebook. Trade Pros, that's one word, Trade Pros, heat and air. Follow SI Sooners on Twitter at all underscore Sooners. Find Ryan at Radios Ryan. That's a Twitter handle, Radios, like plural, Ryan. And I'm over at John E. Hoover on Twitter. Our website, allsooners.com. We are a Fan Nation affiliate, part of the Sports Illustrated Network. Our content for now is free. For now, I emphasize uh, no memberships, no subscriptions, no credit cards. Just click and enjoy. But if you're going to do that, you need to get on now. Uh, find the video version of this podcast on my YouTube channel, John Hoover Media. And yes, guys, I still need your help. If you're watching us at that original channel, John Hoover Media, that channel eventually, soon, possibly later, I don't know, is going away. Um, pretty soon all my stuff is going to be over at this channel on YouTube. It's a different channel. It's still me. It's all my stuff. Basically, I'm double posting. Bear with me. It's a Google thing. It's a YouTube thing. You can't fight City Hall, and that's what those guys are when you're talking about the Internet. So what I need you to do, jump over there real quick, and please subscribe right there. Go ahead. I'll wait. And big shout out to Trade Pros in Oklahoma City. Those guys have been with us with us pretty much from the beginning of this podcast, and we appreciate them. If you need an air or heater tune-up, inspection, maintenance, or if you're ready, really ready to upgrade, or if you just have questions about your unit, uh, give Caleb and Carrie a call, 405-249-7290, 405-249-7290. Okay, Ryan, let's dig into the Oklahoma offense against the Florida defense. First up, the Gators are going to be without a couple of starters. Uh, safety, Sean Davis, linebacker Ventrell Miller for different reasons, but kind of the same reason. Tell us about it. Yeah, so Ventrell Miller, let's start with him. He is the Florida Gators leading tackler, the two-time SEC defensive player of the week. And oh, by the way, he's bagged three and a half sacks for the Gators. He's a guy that is kind of hitting the transfer portal. So interesting to see what happens there. Then you move you know, to that secondary. Davis, like you said, he's opting out. He is a guy that will be moving on much similarly to Trey Brown. He is joint in the joint lead for interceptions for the Gators with two picks there. So I think that the um, Ventrell Miller, that is the key one for Sooner fans because this is a Florida defense that 
uh, it'll be really familiar, honestly, because they generate some pressure. They led the SEC in sacks. They are up there with, uh, I believe it's 33 sacks all season long. So, So they've been getting after the quarterback. If you can withstand that pressure, though, John, You can get chunk play after chunk play against this defense. They are poor um, in third down situations. Third and long, they seem to not be able to get off the field. So it's that thing of can you withstand that initial rush? If you can, you're going to have success throwing against this defense. It's the 97th ranked pass defense in the country. So this is a unit um, that John Lincoln Riley has to be looking on film going, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, let me get into my bag of tricks here because he should be able to scheme up uh, some wide open wide receivers here uh, to, to put up some points with that explosive Florida offense here in the Cotton Bowl. I'm guessing at this point that OU is going to be without one of its starters. Tight end Austin Stogner. Stogner got hurt against Kansas, hasn't been back. So, you know, they've lived life without Austin Stogner. Kind of like uh, Davis, he was gone the last three games. They've moved on from Davis, even though he's opting out now. Uh, it's not like that him being gone from this game is suddenly shocking to anybody like maybe Trey Brown. Um, but, you know, Oklahoma's adjusted. They've developed other targets. Although, you know, it's too bad because Spencer Rattler was really developing, I think, a confidence and a rapport with Stogner over the middle. Um, so maybe he keeps working the ball to Drake Stoops as a safety valve. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Stogner plays. But uh, maybe you see a couple more balls if he doesn't over the middle to Jeremiah Hall. We've seen that pick up in the last couple of weeks. Uh, Lincoln Riley maybe in- evolves that kind of play action rollout where he fakes the handoff to Stevenson and then sets up and then throws back across the middle to Stevenson. That play came out in the Big 12 title game, worked out pretty great twice. Um, Speaking of Stevenson, Ryan, you think he's going to have some running room? Um, Florida's defense hasn't been exactly the best. You talked about their pass defense, but I'm talking about their run defense. Najee Harris, who, by the way, I can't believe he's not going to New York as a Heisman finalist. 27 touchdowns, I think. He cooked them up pretty good, but listen to this. Arkansas ran for 209 yards. Texas A&M ran for 205. LSU ran for 179. Ole Miss ran for 170. Georgia ran for 165. And Kentucky ran for 159 yards, Ryan. Um, I think it's time for Oklahoma's offensive line to get busy, to kind of have a day. Their last two outings weren't very good, really, at all, if you think about it. They struggled to clear space in the running game against both Baylor and Iowa State. You expect it against Iowa State. Um, I was a little surprised that Baylor outplayed him up front. Although I think if Lincoln Riley against Iowa State had given the football to Ramondre Stevenson 25 to 30 times instead of 15 times, he'd have had 150 yards and, you know, OU probably would have pulled away in the second half instead of, you know, what he did was he threw it a bunch and had to punt five straight possessions. Uh, Ryan, can Oklahoma generate a running game? against the Florida defense? Yeah, John, you're going to be hitting the panic button going into 2021 if they can't because we expect most of these guys probably to return. We'll see on Creed Humphrey, obviously. But there will be two things that stand in the way of a big day on the ground, in my opinion. First off, it's dealing with defensive lineman Zachary Carter. He leads the Florida Gators in sacks. He's been disruptive all year long. Um, Five sacks for him, but he's also in that backfield a lot, disrupting the run game, even if he doesn't bring the running back down If you can kind of scheme around him, which like you said, plenty of teams have had success doing, you should be in a good spot. The second thing I would be concerned with, and and you kind of touched on it when you talked about what what Lincoln Riley did in that Big 12 championship game against Iowa State, is if Lincoln Riley psychs himself out, we've seen it sometimes in big games when things start to go south, John. Lincoln Riley tends to forget about the run game. He leaves it behind. He kind of gets back to his roots. He, he goes a little air raid bro on you. And it, it th- that's what gets Oklahoma off schedule. I think it's a big reason why you see, oh, you get out to these huge leads and almost like hold on for dear life after halftime in some of these bigger games because because they forget that run game after that first set of adjustments. So Ramondre Stevenson, does he have that top-level breakaway speed that Anaji Harris does, which led Naji to plenty of run, uh, you know open running lanes? And really where Najee Harris killed the Gators was 
as that running back in the passing game out of the backfield. No, I don't think Ramondre Stevenson has that high level, like final top gear, but he has the elusiveness. He has that, he's that hard nosed running style. He'll get those tough yards. He has everything else you'd want. And his build is pretty similar to Harris. So if Lincoln Riley can stay committed to the run game, even if he, he gets off schedule two or three drives in a row, if he can remember to stay to those routes, I think this offensive line should have a lot of success. Um, you know, Carter with standing there. So I, John, to answer your question, I think you should see a big day on the ground. And and it should honestly be a part of OU's game plan, John, because everyone knows what does everyone try to employ to, to slow down that Lincoln Riley offense. Shoot, if you can get that run game going, keep them off the field, that's just less time physically that they can hurt you through the air. Oklahoma can try to employ a little bit of that, and, and it'll serve two masters as it'll wear down that Florida defense and maybe help slow down Trask and get that Florida offense out of rhythm. Now, the last game out, uh, the Big 12 championship game, the Iowa State game, uh, Anton Harrison got on the field late. Okay, offensive line. Chris Murray did as well. So what does that say? Um, I'm not really sure other than I think maybe for sure it says those other guys got tired. Uh, I do think Eric, Eric Swenson struggled again in pass pro. And, I mean, say what you want about too much passing in the first place, right? Uh, probably needs to be running the football with a big lead and uh, Eric Swenson on the edge. Uh, but, the, uh, yeah, I mean, just look at the those guys in the, the offensive line, the Oklahoma offensive line, they spent a lot of time going backwards in the second half, meaning pass pro. And Iowa State kind of sniffed that out. Um, I think Florida is very capable of doing a, something similar with that defensive front that you mentioned being, you know, 33 sacks on the season. Uh, Ryan, what do you think if Spencer Rattler in his first bowl game as the uh, as the OU starter? He played in the Peach Bowl last year against LSU. He got some mop-up time at the end. But, uh, you know, he played against Texas, kind of an up-and-down game. He played against Bedlam. He played against Oklahoma State in Bedlam. That was a good game for him. He played in a Big 12 championship game. He was the MVP of that game. I thought, like Lincoln Riley, I thought he played one of his best games, if not his best game of the year. How do you think he does in his first full duty in a bowl game against an SEC defense, Ryan? So I, I think this will be really interesting, John, because Spencer Rattler's biggest battle is going to be b- between his ears, I think. Yes, in name, this is an SEC defense, but if you look at the product that the Florida's put out on the field all year long, some of the just inexcusable coverage busts, things like that, this is not an elite defense by any means. But what is elite is, is that offense on the other sideline. And Spencer Rattler, with all due respect to Sam Ellinger, to Brock Purdy, to all those guys, he has not faced anyone that could sniff the skill level of Kyle Trask in the Big 12, which means this is the first time he's going to have that pressure on his shoulders that if Oklahoma comes out and the offense stalls, things like that, that unit on the other sideline is just as capable as three plays, 40 seconds off the clock, and it's seven the other way. So I'm really interested to see. This is an element we haven't seen Spencer Rattler face all season long, and it's not something you can really quantify, John, I think, until you start to look at turnovers. Spencer Rattler has taken care of the ball, done an exceptional job since that Texas game, but he's going to have a different kind of pressure on him. It's not that pressure of the big stage of the big game that, that I would be worried about. It's that fact that Spencer Rattler has flashed a little gunslinger, John, and, and this is the first time he's going to face a, a high powered offense on that other sideline that can go blow for blow with him, assuming that that Oklahoma offense is running on all cylinders. So I think that he's not going to be incredibly tested by this Florida defense it's going to be how far has he come mentally can he take care of the ball over and over and over despite the fact that he might have a different kind of scoring pressure on his shoulders that he's had all season long so so I think this is a great measuring stick to for the growth of Spencer Rattler because we know he can make all the throws we just don't know if he will be able to stay locked in for all four quarters with that extra pressure of Feeling like that grouping on the other side, Kyle Trask and that Florida offense can score with the best of them. So we'll just have to see, can Rattler stay cool, calm, collected, locked in for all four quarters, even though this Florida defense shouldn't be anything that should uh, strike any fear into the heart of this Oklahoma offense. He did uh, He did make some gunslinger throws in that Big 12 championship game. He got away with a few. See if uh, that happens again when they play Florida again in the same exact stadium. Kind of cool. Up next on the SI Sooners podcast, we're going to make our picks. 
Hey, are you a business owner looking to get your product out there to the masses? Let's say you run a hotel in Norman or a car dealership in Oklahoma City or a restaurant in Edmond. Or maybe you're a small online business who creates and sells OU merchandise and you just want Sooner Nation to come sample your wares. Well, then consider advertising in this space right here on the SI Sooners podcast. SI Sooners reaches thousands of readers, viewers, and listeners literally every day. And the SI Sooners podcast is the ideal place to find your next customer. To advertise, send an email to allsoonerssi at gmail.com or DM us on Twitter at all underscore Sooners. Final segment of the SI Sooners podcast. Uh, you know what we missed? Ryan, how was your Christmas? What'd you do for Christmas? What'd you do for the holidays, man? Oh, yeah. So, obviously, you know, a lot of stuff going on. Christmas is a little different this year. Uh, my grandparents are stationed up in Henrietta, so usually the, the entire family descends upon Henrietta. Um, we weren't able to have that, you know, super big gathering. So, uh, just me and my immediate family went to visit them. It was just us and the grandparents, masked up, all that stuff. But we were still able to, to get together. It's the first time I had seen them since March before then. So, that was really great. Um, I think it's the longest I've gone in my life without visiting the parental, uh, the grandparents. So they were very happy to see me able to still do all the gift stuff. So other than that, it was nice and, and relaxing. Not as much traveling as you did, John, but, uh, you know, uh, whatever works, right? Yeah, I took a couple of days. I took a couple of days off. Uh, I flew to Maine to spend Christmas with my daughter. Um, wife and son flew up a couple of days ahead of me. You know, I had a little obligation in Arlington, Texas last week, turns out. So uh, so I got to spend all week in Bangor, Maine, home of Stephen King. Yeah, she's a big Stephen King uh, fan like myself. But uh, she's up there going to grad school, wants to be an occupational therapist, wants to work with kids. Um, pretty proud of her, obviously, after her career at the University of Tulsa. Uh, we got to go up there and hang out in Maine, man. Christmas, Christmas in Maine. I think there's a Hallmark movie about Christmas in Maine. It is the place to be. We went down to the coast. Uh, and even though it was literally about 10 degrees with the wind chill, the Maine coast is just phenomenal. Um, I ate way too much food, about a, probably a billion calories. Um, I'll be back on the treadmill to start 2021, just like I was to start 2020. Okay, Ryan, let's make our uh, our picks for this game. You're the new guy, so you get to go first. I want you to give me your score coming up at the end. But first, I want you to tell me about how the game's going to flow, what happens in the game on Wednesday, who gets going, who has a big day, that kind of thing. What are some of your keys to this game? Yeah, so I think that um, we have a large enough sample size over this 2020 season, John, that we can kind of lay out a blueprint for how this is going to go. And, and we can reach back to, to Lincoln Riley's entire head coaching career. Anytime he has a, a few days off, save maybe the Orange Bowl against, against the Crimson Tide and last year's Peach Bowl, the offense tends to get rolling early. He has some tricks up his sleeve. And so this is exactly what I expect to happen. I expect Ramondre Stevenson to come out, have a really big first half, and I expect Spencer Rattler to get rolling. I think that Marvin Mims will have a role in this game early on. I think that we see Jaden Hazelwood finally get back on track. He's a guy that the, the coaching staff spoke really highly of. He came back for that Kansas game, and then he missed Oklahoma State with you know uh, some stuff going on there then obviously the postponement. He never really got to get back into the flow of things. I think finally Hazelwood will get rolling, and I really like Braden Willis. We don't know if Austin Stoddard is going to play, kind of like you mentioned earlier, but if Braden Willis can kind of slot in there, kind of fill that role a little bit, he's shown he has the capability to do that um, in Bedlam, and then again with a the big catch there in the Big 12 championship game against Iowa State. So I expect all those guys to get going early. I expect Oklahoma to head into the halftime with maybe a 10-point lead, and then it's time to white knuckle whatever is near. If you're an Oklahoma fan, I, I think that that's where the halftime adjustments will kind of happen. And we've seen, I, I don't need to bring this up, but little shades of the Rose Bowl, maybe, John, where a second half comeback, the adjustments from the Florida Gators, things like that, because you're not going to hold Trask and that offense down for long. Um, I personally have some questions about if Florida wants to even be playing in this game, dating all the way back to to Dan Mullen saying on the night of the SEC championship game that this is the last time they would that this team would play together. I think that 
Whether they want to show up or not by halftime, these are all competitors. They'll be locked in to make those adjustments and, and try to get back into that game. So I expect Oklahoma to get out early and then to have to nurse this lead across the finish line. But I do think ultimately, John, the Sooners will get it done. I've got Oklahoma uh, springboarding into 2021, 37 to 34, outlasting Kyle Trask in that explosive offense. I think um, I think you're probably right on with Florida's disinterest to play this game. But like you said, when you throw them out there on the field, these guys are high level, high level elite athletes, and say. That Oklahoma team's embarrassing you. Are you going to fight? You know what I mean? It, it, not saying that Oklahoma's going to be up 35 at the, at the halftime, but I'm just saying once they get rolling, once they get the sweat going, they're going to have a little pride. You're right. I don't think they care to be there. They lost the championship game. I don't think they really – I just get that feeling. Maybe I'm wrong. You know, Florida can prove me wrong. But uh, I think Oklahoma's looking at this as, an, as a real opportunity, especially, you know, coming off of last year's bowl game and all the playoff failures. Hey, guys, they're thinking – we got to win a bowl game. We can't win a playoff game, but by God, we can win a bowl game. Um, I'll tell you what, in this particular game, how I'm, what I'm most eager to see, and that is how many times Ramondre Stevenson gets the football. If he gets it 20, 25, 30 times, I think the Sooners are going to win and maybe win comfortably. Like you said, 10 or 11 points, um, something like that at the end of the game would not surprise me. But if he doesn't get it a bunch – if he if he's not allowed to control the, the the tempo, if he only gets it like 15 times, kind of like he did the last time in Jerry World, I think the game's going to be a lot closer, and I think Oklahoma might not win. Uh, Florida, now I've mentioned it, they're going to give up some rushing yards, so you can control the tempo of this game. You can kind of dictate how many possessions Kyle Trask and those guys get, and you can kind of limit that high scoring Florida offense a little bit more by running the football, slowing it down, being deliberate, being uh, assertive at the line of scrimmage. Uh, now, listen, you're not going to stop Florida. You're probably not even going to slow them down much, but I guess playing keep away is fine, controlling the clock, grinding out first downs. That's got to be the formula. You've got to finish drives with touchdowns. Um, field goals are not going to cut it in this game. Oklahoma's going to have to score, I think, Ryan, 30, 33, 35. Um, For sure. I think the Sooners are probably capable of doing that. I also think they're capable of playing good defense in this game. I do. Not every possession, not every play, for sure. They're going to give up plays. They're going to give up chunk chunk plays and yardage points. But they can rush the passer if they can make Trask throw off schedule, make him a little uncomfortable, get home once in a while, chase him around, sack him a handful of times, not give up too many of the big plays through the air. I think OU wins it 38-30. All right. Okay, you guys, this is Ryan's first show, so you need to go find him on social media. Look for him on Twitter, at Radios Ryan, or if you're leaving comments on Facebook or YouTube, be kind. Please be sure and welcome him. Uh, let him know how he did. I think we built up a pretty strong, pretty loyal following in all these comments and, and communities that we're in, and I think you guys are really going to like what Ryan brings to the table. Listen to the SI Sooners podcast on iTunes. Spotify, Google, iHeart, or wherever you get your podcast, or on your Amazon-enabled device, just say, Alexa, play the SI Sooners podcast, or go to allsooners.com, click on the player, and listen on your phone, your tablet, or your computer. And you can always watch the video version of this podcast on my YouTube channel, John Hoover Media, or that other one, just look for John Hoover. For Ryan Chapman, I am John Hoover. See you guys. <laughs>